Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. We're back for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Vegas J, the big kahuna. Robin. And? <laughs> and? And I'm Billy Dunn, guys. And we got Billy Dunn. What's happening? So yeah. Billy is our guest tonight. But before we actually talk about him, as always, I have got my stuff all matched up. So let's get right to it. Is that extra loud or is that just me? Loud. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week I drink a different rum of a different tiki mug and uh, try and match it up to our guests. So one of the things that uh, Billy does, he does a lot of things. We're going to talk about half.com for those of you who know what half was. Uh, we're going to talk about par wheels cars. And Billy builds uh, rabbit huts and chicken coops. And so I wore my Coxper rum T-shirt for the uh, the chicken part of it. <laughs> and the rum I'm drinking tonight is called John Emerald, and it's got a rabbit on it. So this is nice. awesome. a uh, flavored rum out of Alabama. It's got an orange flavor. I think Bridget might have sent it to me. And tonight I'm drinking out of a Trader Sam's tiki mug from Disneyland. World. Oh, land. Yep. Mine, Jay. I got mine, and I got it. I'm I'm representing my local Tiki Ba Jungle Bird with an artist that we both know, Tiki Tony, made all the graphics on this. So, cheers, Tiki Tony. You're watching. Very, very nice. And uh, Billy, what are you drinking this evening? Well, I uh, I didn't have a chance to pick up a Tiki mug, but I am drinking my uh, tea tonight out of uh, a stainless steel mug. But I did happen to pick up. Sure. Look at that! <laughs> Good job, Billy. Good job. Well done. All right, Billy. Enjoy the show. Sit back, relax. I'm gonna turn your camera off, and in about half an hour, just make sure your pants are on. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, apparently because Billy is on a uh, mobile, I cannot turn his camera off. So. Billy, just enjoy the show. You'll be down there watching us. But I do have your I do have your volume down, Billy. All right, cool. So let's get right into it. We've done Tiki Talk. More. Our <laughs> scores of the week, where Rob and I will show you all the cool stuff we've sold this week, give you a bunch of bolos, things to be on the lookout for, things that will make you money. I think I have, yeah, I got you up first. Okay, hold on. Let me get my little graphic up. Okay, everybody, this is Nina Piccolino. So, yeah, so uh, I didn't know a lot about it. Uh, my bestie, Kim, just, uh, this dress, and I picked it up at a garage sale for, like, I think a dollar or two. And uh, I took best offer, as you can see. So um, the only problem is you can't see the length of this, I think. And Oh, yes, you can in the second photo. Um, it's just a cocktail dress, and it's super cute, super cute. So did, some, did someone say it, cocktails? For I'll eight. drink to that. Cocktails, yes. Everybody, cheers. So yeah, so she needed it for a Christmas party. Oh, and then talking about Christmas, nice segue, Jay. Uh, this we found, I think, at Your Savers in Vegas, and uh, we took best offer. And I'm now, uh, so this is this sold pretty quickly and uh, easy to ship. It was just in a big poly bag. And it actually went to, uh, it says free shipping, but it actually went to Germany. So he paid like 20 something bucks for shipping. Nice. Yeah. Ooh. And now we're getting into Teresa Cox, uh, and her, like, as she says money. So, uh, <laughs> Jim does, uh, all these jackets. He goes to, uh, his little honey hole and he finds them for half off in the summer. And so now we're putting them up and we're just selling them like hotcakes. So this is a Jordan Jumpman. It's a, a medium. And as you can see, it sells, but it's also a medium, which we didn't think would sell as quickly, but it sold. I only had it up for like five days and then boom. And then boom. Nice. Well, kids. Oh, and this is my favorite coat, you guys. So it's a vintage nineties Tommy Hilfiger. It, speaks for itself um jim did a really cool photo just to show that the pocket in the front so a lot of the snowboarders and i'll even say skiers uh like this this coat because it's just rad oh my god i just use an 80s term it's rad <laughs> so you guys you guys need to get a styrofoam head and when you do hoods stick the head in there 
Yeah, that's a good point. And we do actually we have two, um, but they're just creepy, Jay. So uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll creep out my customers. Sure. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my first uh, score is this sh sh Shag Disneyland Tomorrowland 50th anniversary shirt. I paid 30 bucks for it and sold for $200, so I was very happy with that. Anything Shag and Disney is always a bolo to pick up. Uh, this was, I used to collect Marvin the Martian things. My Actually, my first tattoo, which is underneath right there, is a Marvin the Martian. And this was just laying around my office, and I said, I'll throw this little thing up. And it's only about that big. It's tiny. And so when Sophia was doing her research and I saw it sell, I'm like, wait, how much did that sell for? $140 no for a little pewter thing. So that was obviously uh, something people were hunting for. So I was like, I was happy it was still laying around my desk. That's so cool, Jason. I found these Lacoste uh, alligator jeans a while back and uh, there weren't any on eBay at the time, but there were a pair of shorts with a big alligator on it. And the shirt sold for 50 bucks. I had these jeans up at 200. I had not had any nibbles and I got a nibble for 70 and I was happy to take it. I only paid $4.99. So anytime you see anything Lacoste that has a giant alligator on it, that is always a good pickup. That's cool. And then uh, I can't uh, do a show this time of year without showing some Christmas music. This is one that isn't on Amazon. So when I would scan it to double check if it was a good purchase, there was nothing to go off of and no one had it on eBay. This is a collection of Rockabilly, Psychobilly, and Hillbilly holiday music. Those are all three different genres that are closely related, but they do have some differences. So I want to make sure that I hit all three of the genres in the title. And uh, it was only up for about a week and a half or a week, and then I paid two ninety nine and it sold for thirty bucks. That's so rad. Now I'm going to say that word all night. <laughs> we had our scores. <laughs> Now it's time for our duds of the week. Don't let our mistakes be yours. We've had some good sales, but we've had some clunkers too. Oh, yeah. And this one would be it. So I thought I was doing really well with like, you know, old media. Uh, yeah. Wah, wah. So I had it up for like 15 bucks. We It's been up there forever. As you can tell, the photos are super old. So it's like, I think two years, maybe almost two years that it's been there. So we just took and ran with it. So, and the guy was happy with it. So I don't know what he's doing with it. Maybe put it in an RV. I don't know, but cause it's super tiny. It's not, it's not super big. Yes. I thought this would totally rock, but it's a Lake Tahoe. It's really cool. It's graphic. It's like, you know, but it, yeah. What, what can <laughs> I say about mugs? Right. Are you guys feeling the pain too? So I just, it's been sitting there for a while and I just said, I'm going to take seven bucks for it. And uh, the shipping, that's not right. Uh, the shipping, we, we FOMO'd it. So it was six ninety five. I don't know why it's showing 10. If you uh, don't know what FOMO is, look for Jay's uh, video. Yeah, look for my video. Uh, you know, Disney stuff does do well, but the main characters are plentiful. So Mickey, Bell, Grumpy dopey you know it helps to find uh second tier third tier and fourth tier uh, characters this was a small uh footied pajamas had it forever and finally someone offered me 15 bucks and i was happy to take it and say bye bye i'm not buying you ever again and this one's a dud twice uh i had one of these hard bra cases forever finally sold going to gibraltar and apparently uh sophia filled out the customs wrong because it came back and never even left the country. It got rejected <sighs> at our postal service. So I reshipped it. I think I fixed the errors. I don't know. We'll find out if it comes back again in three days. So <laughs> that's a bummer. It's, it's super cute though. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for. Close Encounters of the Thrifty Kind, kind, kind. Rob and I will tell you story, fun, weird, angry stories of us uh, with other people or <laughs> objects in the thrift store. Wouldn't you run away from this man if you saw him in the thrift store looking like this? All yeah, right, I'd throw my slushy on it. Robin's uh, Thrifty Encounter included the dark side, apparently. Oh, it was so cool, Jay. It was so cool. Okay, so... 
I learned so much with my girls in Chicago. It was Joy, uh, Brenda, AK Bridget, uh, Kim, and the the Star Wars, the new Star Wars movie is coming out. And so they have this new logo, uh, Lego, Legos. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Legos thing coming out. So I went to Target and standing in line for these Legos. Like it was crazy. So next thing I know, these two characters are like totally stalking me. And I was like, oh my gosh, what do I need to do? And they're like, get your camera out, take a photo. And I totally had to take a photo because they're just so bad ass. So yeah, so this is my thrifting encounter. And they wanted to know why I was buying so many Legos. And I was like, um, cause I have a lot of nieces and nephews. <laughs> yeah. So I gotta say, of all the thrifty encounters I've told, and I've told ones where people have pooped in the parking lot in front of me, uh, I've never had such a badass one that Boba Fett was in it. So well done. <laughs> yes, right? I knew you would totally love it. All right. So my thrifty encounter, I'm gonna show you a picture in a second. I actually stupidly didn't take the actual picture, so I've kind of pieced it together. But I was in LA last weekend and I was hanging out with our good friend Kim, and I was showing her all about record store Black Friday. So on Black Friday limited edition records and a couple CDs and a couple cassettes come out and uh, you, you got to list them right away. And so one of the CDs that came out was the original release by the artist Tori Amos. Back then she was called Why Can't Tori Read? And it's been out of print forever and worth a lot of money. So the way the store worked, and here's a picture of the store, it's called CD Trader and Tarzana. The way the store worked was you had to walk up to the counter and tell them what you wanted. And the guy behind the counter was going through the boxes and hand them to you. So I said, hey, do you have the Why Can't Tori Read CD? And he said, nope, we're already sold out. And I was like 10th, uh, 12th in line or something. I said, okay. So Kim and I go to stand in line to ring out. And where I've got that arrow pointed, that's the aisle we were standing in to ring out. And as I'm just standing there, just I think I was talking to Kim or whatever, I looked down and sitting on the CD rack next to me was... The Why Can't Tori Read CD. Someone had grabbed it to buy it and decided not to buy it and left it just sitting in the line. So I picked it up for $14.95 and sold it the same day for $50. That's awesome. So that's like a little bonus bolo. So, you know, sometimes when you're not looking, the items just show up right in front of you. No kidding. All right, now it is time for our thrifty tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to make your thrifting excursions better and more profitable. Oh, right. there's Kim. This is a little sh uh, a apology to my good friend Nadine. So my, my, my thrifty tip is... <laughs> Make sure if you're out thrifting and you're near a Buffalo Exchange, you do stop in and buy stuff at Buffalo Exchange. Now, you might think, hey, Buffalo Oaks curated the stuff and they've priced it accordingly. That is true on most, but not all. So, uh, Nay, anytime I visited Nay in Philly, she always wanted me to go to Buffalo Exchange. I'm like, nah, there's nothing good there. Well, since then, I've been going. And this is Kim and I in Ventura, California. And although I'm not going to show you everything I found from that uh, uh, stop, I am going to show you the best thing I found because this is the kind of cool shit Ooh. you can stumble across in Buffalo Exchange. Are you excited, Robin? Are you ready? I am I am totally excited. Okay. Vintage. Made the USA, USA stone wash, acid wash, whatever you want to call it, Levi's jacket. Okay. Ooh, yeah. The tags on the lower bottom of the jacket, but here's what's cool about the jacket. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Come on, show! Oh! So across oh, the back, no. we got the big Iron Maiden, the Led Zeppelin, the Ooh. Pink Floyd. On this sleeve, we have Van Halen. On this sleeve, oh. we have ACDC. On the oh, front, dude, I know you're not selling that. On the front, we have another maiden, and it's an extra large, so good size. Uh, but look at the back. Oh, yeah, and you. The back dude, is super that cool. rocks. See how the bottom is? It's kind of neat. This little yes. uh, chevron, and then there's a label, and it's kind of like a little bit of pleat here. So it is super cool, made in the USA, vintage 80s jacket with this on it. And as the chat saying, oh, my God, most amazing jacket, 
I only paid forty-five dollars. Oh my gosh! And I am. I am. I am expecting two two fifty for it. Nice, dude. That is so epic, 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 yeah. epic. I, I thought you liked that. So ah, the tip is the tip is go and, and I I found like five other things that'll be showing on the next haul. The tip is go to Buffalo Exchange and dig because you will find good good stuff. When we went to Buffalo and I oh, found yeah. that Adidas Darth Vader Death Star thing that you now own, <laughs> and then uh, you know, because I got to have fun when I'm in Buffalo Exchange. So this was in the hat section. So this is this is Jay's sweet side, and then this was in the hat section too. And this is Jay's <laughs> evil side. So there you go. There's my the angel horse, and devil dude. <laughs> All right, you're up, girl. Oh, sorry. See, look, I got so taken away with the Iron Maiden thing. I'm like, oh, the show's over. No, oh, okay. So my thrifty tip. Okay, so do you know you guys when you take your tool case or whatever to when you go thrifting? So I've just discovered baby wipes. I know that sounds really strange. I'm a scrapbooker by heart, so I have baby wipes in my stuff. So I was was trying to see if a stain would come out because if it comes out then I know it's I can wash it and it's I'm gonna, it's gonna go in my cart so it did it worked someone had said it I can't remember it was in the thrifting board and so I thought I would try it and it totally worked so my thrifty tip is take a couple in your pocket or in a ziploc bag if you see something try to get it out see if it's gonna come out because it might actually be worth and, and washing it like if it's vintage or whatever so that's my tip Cool. Now it is time for <laughs> you have got to be shipping me. Where Robin and I will give you tips and tricks, what to do and what not to do on shipping. Now, I te if you saw the little tease we did on on uh, YouTube earlier, I bought three Trader Sam's tiki mugs. This being one of them. On eBay, it was a day when eBay was giving us bonus eBay bucks, and I'm like, well, I go, I should go buy something. And so I found someone selling Absolutely. Food. And, and what Trader Sam's do is they keep retiring the mugs and changing the colors. So this one seller had three different mugs in different color setups than I had. I missed all three of those color setups. And the price was right. It was actually, you know, maybe a little bit under. So when I bought them, I had no clue. I bought them from a member of the thrifting board. And in the, in the uh, mugs was a note. Enjoy the mugs. Hopefully my shipping won't land me on the what not to do. <laughs> and uh, cheer, cheers, Laura. So, Laura, cheers to you because all three of the mugs were in great shape and you did a great job packing. So, I ain't got to say nothing bad about you. Pack it. So, that's just that's just a little added bonus. But I, got, I do have another shipping tip in a second, but Robin is up first. Oh, it's mine. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is Industrial Strength Saran Wrap. Peggy and Regan use for all of their skis and their snowboards and anything big. So I have a friend who totally sold that car on, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> sold that car on eBay and it was going on a car trailer. So because he steam cleaned it and he polished it up and he did the tires, he was like, there's no way I'm putting it on this car trailer because it's an open car trailer. It. So he totally used Peggy's tip <laughs> and used industrial <laughs> strength saran wrap. And so he literally, I had to come and see it because I couldn't believe it. And he sure did. It totally saran wrapped it. And it got there and the buyer thought it was great because there was bug stuff all over it and it didn't get chipped and it was, it was awesome. So it was a great, and I just had to share because this was epic. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say from actual experience, when Stacy and I moved from Cleveland to Long Beach, California, Stacy's company moved us. So both our cars yeah, got oh, picked cool. up on the back of a piggybacker, you know, a car mover, a semi, you know. And so it, it took about a week to get our cars to us. And when the guy unloaded them, I went to open the door and it had gotten so filthy, you could see, hear, and feel the oh. dirt break as you open the door. So you can't imagine Aww. how filthy your car gets on the back of those carriers. So saran wrapping it, excellent idea. I love it. All right. Great tip. So here's my actual tip. Now, 
when you uh, when you want to stay at top rated, and th these are my actual numbers, so I am top rated. As you can see, I'm doing quite well. The late shipment rate has to be 3% or under to stay within the means. And as you can see, my, sh my late shipment is zero. I'm pretty good at this. But here's the tip. I got a customer who said, uh, just purchased something, paid, and then asked if I could wait till Tuesday to ship it till they're back home from a little vacation. And I do not mind taking care of my customers. So because I only I have 0% late shipment, I am holding this for him like he asked, and I will ship it on Tuesday. Now, if 100% of your customers asked you to ship it late, you can't do that, but that'll never happen. So if one customer says, hey, can you hold on to it and ship it a few days later for me? Your answer should be absolutely. If, you, if you're good, if you're good like me and you've got a 0% late shipment rate, one package will not mess you up. So don't sweat it. Take care of your customers. Now, if you're in trouble already, you're going to have to work around and figure something out, other resolve out. You probably have to cancel it, have them rebuy it. But if you have zero, take care of your customer. Always take care of your customer. As Robin said, call eBay and it won't affect your rate. I could. I won't need to because I don't have any other uh, any other uh, dings against my shipping. Or, or, so I'm not so concerned. But you're right. Because they corresponded, you also could take care of it that way. But always, always take care of your customer. All right. Hey. Time for our eBay tips of the week. Things to make you a better eBayer. So I'm up. Okay, so you guys know that I'm all about the seller hub, right? Oh, it's kind of like all about the base, right? I'm all about this. Okay, no, I'm not going to sing for you. So the seller hub. So you guys go under seller hub and it's under performance. And this is going to give you the breakdown of your selling cost. So you can see if you are getting a... Uh, I, like after all your things I, I what I didn't do is show the photo down below but but anyway so you can see like my net sales for, you know and how much of that is my total sales and then if you look at the little graph up above it'll show you the different colors like so it'll show you like your PayPal fees your listing fees your fee credits your discounts you know so it's just cool it's just one more piece of the seller hub that I just absolutely like to share with everybody because I don't think people use the seller hub as much as they should. It has everything you're ever going to need to really make your business to the next level. Take it to the next level. And I'm going to admit something. I've never seen this screen until you sent it to me today. So <gasps> I can't wait to look at it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jay, it's really fun. It's really fun because down below it'll tell your adjustments too. Do you know what I mean? It'll tell you like your discounts, your subscriptions. Uh -huh. it'll, it'll show everything that you need seen it by the <laughs> all right so here's my ebay tip you, look you gotta hustle you gotta be a hustler mm -hmm. so when i'm in la <laughs> when i'm buying record store day stuff there is a small window where it sells so after i left tarzana see um see uh, this is me parked in front of freak beat records you can see it right past my big round head and before i went <laughs> there and shopped I quickly took pictures and listed all my records I just purchased. So my nice. office became the bed of my truck and I'm using my phone to list and my iPad to research real quick what each title was approximately selling for so I can put it in the right price range. So you can sh list on mobile. If you've got two devices, use one to research, one to list, drop the bed on your truck, it's a, it was a nice, somewhat little overcast day. I was taking decent pictures, and I knocked all the records out and standing in the street, basically. So you have got to hustle. You've got to not slack, and especially this time of year, you've got to get your shit listed. Absolutely. You know why, Robin? Because it's all about the money. Because you got to keep your eye on the prize. Yo, yes. I love and, this picture. And finally... Thrifting outside your comfort zone. We are all very good in our comfort zones, but it's when we get outside of it and make more money. And we're going to talk about Billy a little bit because his comfort zone was one thing, and then he did something else and something else. Something. His comfort zones are everywhere, so I love that. 
So Rob and I are going to show you a couple things outside of our comfort yeah. zone. Yeah. Okay. So I don't even know where I learned this from. I think it was probably Debbie Weeder. I think, I think. So I'm going to give her the credit. If it's not, and you know who you are, I'm so sorry. Uh, message me. <laughs> so anyway, so we found these at, uh, I think, it, I think it was a thrift store, but I don't, I don't think I remember the name, but we saw them and Jim was like, we should look it up on eBay. And this is in the very beginning when we started and who knew East, that's what we pay for it. That's what the sticker price was on it, that it would sell for 50 bucks. Like what? So yeah, it just proves that like, I, I think it's the name and the fact that it was still sealed. So if someone was redoing a bathroom, like a small little, you know, what is that? A quarter bathroom, this would probably do one wall really well. So Oh, and I just took pictures of the packaging to make sure because there's a little bit coming off and, and shipped them in a tube and off they went. It fit in the actual um, shoe box, the priority nice. shoe boxes. So, yeah. And hey, we got, we got a, a person in the chat. Uh, e. Blanco said, I did the same thing on Record Store Day in April on the hood of my car. So, see, that's the hustle nice. you got to bring to this game. Eye on the prize. Shoot for it quick. Now, Robin's... Yes. Robin's outside her comfort zone is about this big, okay? <laughs> Here, here's mine. I decided, oh! although I've never snowboarded a day in my life, that I'm going to start buying snowboards. Nice. Mama Peg would be happy. So this is a Santa Cruz snowboard. I could not find this exact model. Dude, but so like models are selling for $75, and I paid $12 for this. Now, wait, there's more. Ooh. All right. Oh, Jesus. Oh, geez. Oh, oh, geez. oh. oh. <laughs> okay, so this is a burden. Oh. Uh, it's called Burden Feather 150 Ladies uh, Snowboard with the bindings. Now, this exact board sold for $80 without bindings just last week. For sure. And again, I paid twelve dollars. Nice. And where did you find these again? In LA or or Vegas? No, that this was Savers in Vegas. And this is a Burton called Fly Two. And here's the back graphic. It's like a little canyon. Yeah. And yeah. This exact board. Now this one's got a little doing some tricks as you can see right there now this can be fixed in the wax but it is there but uh this la the last one sold for 120 dollars. so i have about 36 dollars invested and i'm looking at well over 300 dollars here and, and guess what and you know how to ship those bad boys now yeah so that is me getting outside my comfort zone <laughs> because I never have snowboarded. I've never used one, and I don't know anything about them, really. And I'm going to need some help because I don't know what the, what the bindings are called. So I am then going to use the thrifting board to help me because I know out of 35,000 members, we got snowboarders. Oh. They can give yes, me the do. terms I need to help me. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Before we get uh, Billy and your mom can help you with shipping. Yeah. Two announcements uh, for a rare, in a rare turn of events. I actually have the next show already scheduled. Yay! <laughs> so what? <laughs> I know. Mom and I are on Sunday. We're going to do Sunday night, six p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. I, that's that's wrong. It should say six p.m. Eastern. So ignore the PT part. I, I'm already I'm ahead of the game, but then I messed up the graphic. It should say six p.m. <laughs> Eastern, three p.m. Pacific. We're going to talk about inserting a video in your listing because it's changed how it works nowadays. So my step, how to do it and uh, make it easy. Plus, we haven't seen my mom do a, do a proper haul and scores in a, in a little while. So tune in on a Sunday afternoon. And then those of you in the Seeker Beach, we were to have a guest webinar today, but I was having computer issues. So we've moved it to tomorrow. So 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Typhoon Liz. Liz was in the Air Force for 23 years. She is now retired. And we're this, this is going to be the first in a series of getting over 
your fears on shipping, <laughs> and we're going to talk a lot about shipping to APOs, FPOs, and DPOs. That means you got to tune in tomorrow. So this is for you, Secret Beach members. Tomorrow, your typhoon is at 7 p.m. Eastern. Nice. That's it. All right. So now it is time for the <laughs> man of the hour, our guest of the week, Billy Dunn. What's happening, Billy? Oh, no, just hanging in there. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah, How are you, doing? sir? Yeah, so, Billy, so, like, so actually yeah. something I, I wanted to say um, about the snowboards that it's really kind of funny that you brought that up tonight because actually that's that's where I uh, that's where I got started in my uh, first professional career was in the outdoor industry and snowboards is absolutely at the top of my list of things oh. I'm, I'm uh, versed in. So yeah, so, nice, Billy. <laughs> how, uh, did, I think you just joined my Facebook group. Am I, am I correct? I, I, I did. There's a, there's a member, um, Zeb Lyons, who's actually a friend of mine that um, thrifts here in Oklahoma City as, as well as I do. And he actually kind of um, told my mom who told me, so kind of through the grapevine, um, that uh, first he told me about the Goodwill bins in the outlet, which I had never heard of. So that's where... I started doing that, and then he let me know about the thrifting board, and so I joined up, and then two days later, I, Robin's requesting that I come talk to you guys, so I, I thought that's interesting, for sure. All right, so those of you having a hard time hearing Sorry. Billy, he's on an iPad because Billy doesn't own a computer. <laughs> yep, everything I do is from mobile devices, and it's been like that for about five years for me now. I don't, Billy, I don't think the mic is picking up from your headset, by the way. I think it's actually oh, okay. picking up off of your iPad. Off of the iPad? Yeah. Okay. So oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but people are saying they can hear oh. perfect, though. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. So I think it's just like a combination of maybe people need to turn their volume up on their computer, maybe. Yeah, and, and here's what I'll do. I'll turn uh, – I, I control the volume a little bit. I'm going to turn mine down a smidge and Robin's down a smidge. So you guys can turn up. Rob and I won't blow your eardrums out. <laughs> so you've been in the group like a week or two, and, and yeah. already you're a guest on the show. Yeah, yeah, I know. I thought that was uh, pretty exciting. So, again, thank you guys for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, I, I, I said to Robin, and I said to Robin, and asked for the show. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kim had noticed you or first or something, and uh, – the more, you know, when Robin got your bio, I'm like, well, this is way deeper than I expected because you trick out power wheels. But then you're like, well, I started on half.com, had a corporate type job, uh, some chicken coops. I'm like, wow, this is a crazy amalgamation of different things. I mean, like, yep. I do different things, but they all kind of tend to run together. Yours are uh, like, I. I'm all over the board. Uh, I, I love I love getting into things that interest me and then finding ways to make money on it. And that's I mean, that has been my my MO since I was since I started working at a paintball store when I was 15 years old, basically. And what um, so uh, you're much younger than Robin and I because we're old. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 30, I'm 35 years so old. When, when you uh, when you started on Half.com, so for those of you who don't know, Half.com was kind of the precursor to really Amazon. It was, um, and, and eBay didn't own them right away. It was it was a, its own entity, and Half thought, no matter what media item you want to sell, and it was kind of textbooks to start, but then it was like CDs and videos and stuff. Um, you could sell it for half of retail and nothing more. So if a CD retailed for fifteen ninety nine, you could sell it for seven ninety nine. And luckily, they because they're like they realized that there was like out of print stuff and stuff that would garner more than than half. And so that's where I started selling stuff. And I, right away, I was selling three to five hundred CDs a month on Half dot com, not eBay, not Amazon. Half dot com. Started out selling on half. So I was in uh, in college in uh, man I was trying to remember the year um, and I think it was 2002 it might have been 2003 
and I was um, sitting in a class and we got our syllabus and I got a list of books that was going to cost me 750 bucks. And I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. This it was like my third or fourth semester in college. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I, I, there's got to be something better. And so I got to talking with one of the, the other students and they mentioned half.com. Well, I hopped on there. I got all of my books for that class and all of my books for the entire semester for something like a hundred bucks. So the next semester, nice. I took all of those books. I put them back on half along with some other textbooks that I had been holding on to because the bookstore wouldn't buy them back, sold them all for several hundred dollars and ended up having extra money. And I did that throughout the semester and actually would take books from my other classmates that, um, especially the out of print ones that they wouldn't buy back at the uh, bookstore. And I would sell those as well. Very cool. So, so, Robin, you're too new to have been on Half.com in terms of your online selling career. Did you even know about Half, Robin? Oh, no. Are you talking to me? Sorry. No, I had no idea. I, otherwise, I would have totally sold all my college books for sure. For sure. Well, I even ended up keeping and, and, quite and, a few textbooks that I you know, still refer to today or keep in my library. Uh, on top of selling all the ones that I didn't want, and I still was able to keep a library. And so um, were you uh, stealing your roommate's books or were you hunting other <laughs> things out? What were you doing? <laughs> no, I was, I had, like I said, I had classmates and friends that would give me uh, their books that didn't know what to do with them and I would sell them. And then that's, it was right after half, it was right after eBay bought half and things um, begin to change that I switched and started focusing um, on the high-end sports stuff. Really, at that time, it was mostly high-end bicycles, buying and selling uh, high-end bikes um, online. And that was back when you could ship an entire bike for 50 bucks and insure it for $1,000. Yeah, the problem with half, for those who don't know, eBay bought, you know, any, any – um online company will t as they get bigger like an ebay or an amazon will buy other companies that that they think is a good fit with their brand and they bought half and then they messed it up they they bought it uh. and they tried to bring it into ebay and then they pushed it back out and it got lost they got lost in the shuffle people never found it again and it just kept going uh. down and down and down and in the meantime amazon was going up and up and up so i started listing all my media on amazon and so, yeah, so what, what made me, my career begin re, got, went bye-bye. And so they finally closed it down, I think, last year. So it's it's dead and gone. <laughs> yeah, but then, it, like, like the segue there is like, okay, so, Billy, so half.com went bye-bye. So then what did you do? Well, What's, what's the like next thing that you did? Well, I went straight, um, I went straight to, uh, or I, you know, I had eBay, of course, still. And so I went uh, more into eBay. And really, at that time, uh, I was selling things like bicycles and sporting equipment, that kind of stuff. But I also sold just a ton of stuff that I found at either um, local disc or uh, thrift stores or, or just stuff that I had laying around that I didn't need anymore. And that, that really helped me out through college. But it was never really... Um, a uh, you know a career or a, a means to an, it was more of a means to an end for me uh, at the time so um i you know graduated college and then uh worked my way throughout the um, outdoor industry uh, starting at the retail level working up got a job with the largest outfitter uh in the <clears throat> um, country clothing manufacturer and uh worked for them became an expert at that stuff and through that entire time i was um, buying and selling uh, gear uh, on the side, uh, whether it be, you know, anything like jackets to skis and snowboards to uh, bikes and everything in between. Um, did that, nice. uh, you know, kind of on the side. And then I lost my job in 2014 and had to sell things for, oh, a, a good six months or so to survive and be able to get myself uh, to move from, we were in Tennessee at the time, to be able to move my family and I back uh, to Oklahoma. So sold 
a ton of stuff that I had bought and sold uh, several other things to be able to make that trip possible. Got back and then sat down with my wife and and we were like, well, what are we going to do now? And, you know, with kind of the situation that I was in. So really, I just kind of started my own business. I um, really kind of started with the chicken coops. Um, there were some other things that I did before. That. All right, hang on, hang on. You're, you're, wait, hang on. Hang on. You're going too far ahead there. We got to back <laughs> okay, up because we have sure. a good question. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Lauren uh, in the chat wants to know, what was your major in college? Uh, I have a degree in psychology oh. and a minor in history, uh, specifically Southwest American history. All right, so you're smart, Get too. Get out, okay. Billy. Oh, That's shit. awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. so, yeah, we got uh, a psychologist so, here. Yeah, no kidding. So you said you moved your family. <laughs> now, what's your family consist of? Uh, okay, spouse, so kids, dogs, what do you got? So uh, we do have uh, we do have a couple of labs. We have chickens now. Yes, we do have chickens now. But um, uh, we've got four kids. I've got a, a seven, six, a seven and six year old. They're uh, both um, uh, on the uh, autism spectrum, and then we they're both in school. And then I also have a four year old that um, is just absolutely talks more than I do. And uh, just a little jibber kid, uh, love him to death. <laughs> and, and then I've got then I've got my princess, who's uh, three boys, and then finally got my girl. She's, uh, she's eighteen months. Oh, so that's, uh, that's a big family that you got to take care of. Make sure there's a roof over their head, food on the table, electricity's on, and you you got your hustle on. You got you were selling your stuff. You go back to Oklahoma, and then uh, all of a sudden, you have n n new avenues that you're uh, making money. So <laughs> before we really get into the, because there's really like three, um, are you still selling normal? Well, I'll call it normal stuff online. Actually, I've I've almost never since the eBay thing. Um, since I stopped selling on eBay when I lived in Colorado, I moved from Colorado in December of 2006. That was that I sold a bike on eBay to pay for that trip back to Oklahoma. That was the last time I sold something on eBay. So that was um, coming up on 12 years ago. So I, uh, I have not done anything on eBay. It has all been local in the areas that I've lived, but it's all been online. It's been Craigslist. I started there, then went to Facebook groups, then Facebook Marketplace. And I'll tell you right now, Facebook Marketplace is absolutely uh, it's the quickest, fastest way to get rid of stuff and not have to do it. No kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Robin, do you use Facebook Marketplace? Well, I actually have a story. Great segue, Billy, because uh, I sold something today on Facebook Marketplace out, like, in my car, Jason and Billy. Like, literally, I was in my car. I snapped photos, put it on Facebook Marketplace. Bam, sold, met the person 30 minutes later, made a little yep. profit. I was like, oh my gosh, I did a Billy. <laughs> well, I did a Billy. <laughs> That's awesome. I tell you the one thing I found that makes my stuff sell the quickest and absolutely the, um, the most convenient for the customer is put delivery on there. Most people won't deliver and most people are too lazy to go out and meet. If you, if you put on there that you will deliver to their for front door, you'll have that item sold in no time. And that's that's what I do. And I have a big trailer and I got a big truck and I can take anything that I'm selling, including a chicken coop, which I sold last week. I can take- I and, love that. And and deliver it and put it right in their backyard if they need to, so. That's okay. awesome. So let's talk about that. And I have on the screen now, uh, you got- Oh, you do? Oh, I gotta check this out. Let's check out Billy's stuff, you guys. Oh you my gosh, it. look at chicken that. Chicken coop. Yeah. Now, Billy, how'd you uh, how'd you get into building rabbit hutches and chicken coops? So that was that something from your childhood or is this relatively new? This is new. So, I've I've always, I've been into sustainable living and, and that kind of stuff for a long time, for a couple of decades now. Um, but I had I've done lots of gardening, I've done lots of of other, you know, sustainable living types of stuff, but I had never messed with chickens. Well, my um, two autistic boys love animals, especially my seven-year-old, and we thought that it would be something good for him to uh, to kind of, you know, just as a therapy to have the chickens. So um, we went right. to a local feed store. You know, we do live here in Oklahoma, so we've got a feed store just about um, two minutes from us. So 
I headed over to the local feed store and talked to them about everything. And I asked them about coops. And they said, well, you're either going to have to buy a junky one from the store or you're going to have to build one. I said, okay, cool. So I did a ton of research. I built one. The one you have up right now, that is my that is my main uh, platform. Uh, I have built, I think, six of those now. And uh, those, wow. yeah, those are, um, they, I've done a few things to those that I don't think anybody else is doing. I have a nest box that's actually a door that opens up and becomes the easiest way to clean a coop. You use a push broom and just pull everything out. It allows you to clean out the nest box and then you can close it right Look back Look at up. you, Billy. So I That am, is so awesome. So I built that. That was the first one I built. And I thought when I was building it, I thought, you know what? I bet I could sell one of these. So I built two at the same time. Um, exactly the same. And uh, I have it sold within a month. And I had it sold through the feed store I went to. So next thing I know, I give them a stack of business cards. and Oh, brilliant. I think over, I think over the last two years, I've built somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 coops all together. And, yeah. And well, and after tonight, Billy, you're going to be building a lot. A lot. <laughs> right? Right. I, I sure hope so. And it, you know, I, I, I like the rustic look. I know there's a lot of people that don't. So I use reclaimed wood to um, do the outside, but I train, I stain and treat. I sold that one last week, but I, uh, I stain and treat um, everything inside and out. And I do it three times. And I also put a warranty on my coops and I also put, um, uh, that they will a warranty that they will be predator proof if I install it because I install it, I actually sink them in the ground with concrete. Wow, Billy, you are amazing, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, wood. I mean, it's just that's awesome. So, Billy, my uh, and my mom just mentioned it in the chat when uh, my family, so my mom's mom and dad moved out uh, of the city of Cleveland into the country with mom and her three siblings. Uh, they started a chicken farm to sell the eggs, uh, de egg delivery. So I remember as a little kid, I was only like <coughs> out of five, I remember candling eggs to make sure that they were good to sell to the customers. So there was a little bit of uh, chicken blood in, in our, our family lineage too. But uh, oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's so crazy that uh, this is awesome. So, Billy, have you always been uh, handy in building stuff since you were a kid? Yeah, my um, my dad taught me a, a lot of stuff when I was a kid. He he got me, a, like, I'm not even joking. I still have it. He got me a, a little carpentry kit with real real working saws and all that kind of stuff. But it but it was soft blades, and it came with balsa wood. And I think I was, like, six years old, and I built my first piece of, like, little furniture um, when I was a kid. And I just kind of, I did Pinewood Derby and did a lot of that stuff. My dad helped me out. Um with a bunch of that stuff. Um, but as I got older, I just started taking things apart and, and, you know, um, for lack of a better term, tricking them out or souping them up and putting them back together, no matter what right. it was or, or making it better. And, and when, by the time I was a teenager, I was working at a paintball store, pulling the guns apart and putting, you know, upgraded parts and stuff on them. And that really just kind of translated over into the rest of my, my, uh, my career after that that's so cool so cool yeah the chat's blown up about your uh about your coops but but, but we're not into the coolest part yet robin no Early. we're not we're I like mean, a this, really cool you know, this part this is kind of just building up but but before we get to the coolest part you did work for uh the north face for a while and, yep, and did correct. you did you enjoy that job uh do you miss it i i did enjoy it um I do miss aspects of it, but it absolutely, in terms of spending time away from my family and everything, it, it just, it, it was too much. I was, uh, I was on the road, um, anywhere from, uh, I look, I covered, I originally was hired to cover eight States, um, uh, from, uh, Memphis to, uh, Southern Florida and, um, uh, and, I ended up having to take on another territory as well. So I ended up having 16 states and I was gone oh. anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks at a time. Oh, uh, and wow. so, so it ended up being um, pretty stressful. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise really that um, I ended up getting uh, laid off. And I, uh, 
but yeah, I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed the customer interactions, the, the technical training. I mean, I've, it's, there's not a lot of things I'm going to toot my horn and say I'm an expert at, but in, in, out, in outdoor, in outdoor clothing and outdoor apparel, outdoor merchandise, really any kind, especially high end stuff. We're talking top tier stuff. Um, I'm, there's probably not a whole lot of people in the world that know about it as much about it as I do. And thank God you're in the thrifting board, Billy. That's all I got to say, because I'm going to hook you up with all of us who have questions. <laughs> Definitely. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have a, a busy thumbs the next couple of days. All right. I think we will, be, sir. I think he's going to get busy with thumbs, Robin. So let's talk about what he really does now. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I do want to show one other thing uh, before we get to the, the one other uh, item. Tell us about this. Oh, I love this. Okay, okay. So I love a, this so much, Billy. So there's a great story behind this. So my my seven year old autistic boy is really really has a problem with throwing toys, and um, I ha actually we had a TV mounted on the opposite wall, and he threw a toy car at it, and and it basically exploded the LCD screen. So. Oh, um, so I, I pulled it off the wall and we said, all right, no TV until until we can figure out a solution. Well, I got online and I looked and I looked and I looked and locking up TV cab locked up TV cabinets are super expensive. They're all metal mm -hmm. and none of them are view through. None of them have a screen to view through except for ones for airports and they're 15 to twenty five hundred dollars. So I'm like, so crazy. Forget that. So I go out to the shop. I um. I have uh, some reclaimed lumber that came from an old um, waterbed, actually. And those are, those are the, old, those are the, the old waterbed supports that are on the walls of that cabinet. And I put those up. I bought the most expensive part of this whole thing was the $90 I had to pay at Lowe's for that plexiglass. It's that big. That's all one piece. Wow. So I bought that at Lowe's and then I t had all the free, um, you know, reclaimed lumber that I picked up, um, put it together literally in an afternoon, stuck it up there, put a spring or a, uh, screen door closers. I put those on there cause you can lock them out. That way you can, you know, switch DVDs out yeah. or, or that kind of stuff, put it up there and, uh, have not had a single problem with, with, uh, um, with the TV or anything. And the coolest thing about it, and I didn't even realize this until after it had been up a while. The coolest thing about the whole thing is, is you don't have to dust. All you have to do is Windex the outside. You don't have to dust anything <laughs> inside. <laughs> oh that, my gosh. That is awesome. All right. So now, you know, we got seven minutes left. Yes. Let's get to the coolest part. Let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, let's talk about it. Like okay. everybody as a little kid wants something like this. Come on, Jason. Right, right. Come on. So, so all, about a year ago, it was actually Christmas. A year ago, I was I was thrifting and I was looking for a Christmas present for my six year old, who five at the time, absolutely loves cars and loves. Um, he loved you know riding on the riding lawnmower and stuff with me, and so I thought, well, I'm gonna go to do some thrift hunting and see if I can find. Um, a, a little, you know, toy car for him. So I go out and I find this little Ford pickup. It, it's on there. It's, I pa ended up painting it red and I found, I found this pickup for him and I took him, um, uh, or took it or brought it home. I think I paid $25 for it, brought it home, didn't have a battery. So I had to go out and buy a battery for it, which that was my first mistake was the amount of money I spent on the first battery. So I went out and I bought the battery. Brought it home, let him drive it. It was six volt and it was horribly slow. So right, and, right, and it was kind of, and it was kind of frustrating him. So I uh, I got online and I got on Facebook and I punched in modified power wheels and there's a group with over forty five thousand people in it that work on power wheels for their wow. Club. So I hop on there, I quickly get immersed into the culture, and within two months I had bought fifty of them. Oh. And now I have over a hundred. Um, most of the ones I've gotten nice. recently, I get for free. I um, I pick them up on the side of the road uh, on curbs. Uh, we call it bulk trash here. We call I call it big trash. We do um, we do bulk trash pickup. And in our city, it is once a month. 
for each section of the city. So wow. any given day, Monday through Friday, there is a part of the city that is having a bolt trash pickup. And this goes on all year long. So I, and there are tons of people here that have made a living out of it, mostly collecting, um, yeah, that's the truck right there, mostly collecting um, metal and taking it and selling it to the metal recyclers. And a lot of people make a lot of good money that way. Well, I didn't want to compete with those guys because there's five of those guys in my neighborhood alone. So I found this, I found this Power Wheels thing and they, for the most part, don't care about them. And I find them everywhere. Some are nearly new. Some, all they needed was a battery. Others are completely destroyed that I just pull a few parts off of. But I use them to do modifications on other cars. But I'm also, the one thing I'm really trying to um, kind of launch it. I did a soft launch here about two weeks ago. But really going to have a hard launch here um, after the beginning of the year. And that is stripping all the parts off of all these cars. And then turning around and selling them online. And that was one of the big reasons why I joined the thrifting board is because um, I, it's it's been 12 years since I've done, um, you know, a lot of shipping and selling on eBay. So um, that's something I really wanted to get back into shipping the parts um, on these yeah. on these cars. So that Corvette, I'll tell you the quick story on that Corvette. I found um, see if you can find that picture, uh, Jason, of the two Corvettes together. There's a red. They were. Uh, Oh, it's back there. The black one. There we go. Right right there. there. Yes, that one. Okay, so those are two separate cars with two separate trims, but they're the same car. And um, the black one I bought in a lot. It is a display from Walmart. It has no motors. It has no electronics. It is 100% just a rolling shell. I bought that. um, uh, I don't remember how much I paid. I think like 20 or 30 bucks for that. I bought... I bought that, and then I was at the Goodwill um, Outlet Center, and that Power Wheels, that that, uh, red Corvette, was sitting there, and I had been sitting on this black one for a while trying to figure out what I was going to do with it, and I walk in there, and it's the very first thing I see, and I walk over, and it's got $4.99 written on it. So, I picked it up. What? Yep, so I picked it up at the Goodwill. Will outlet for five dollars. <laughs> it's got it's got one spot on it where a dog chewed the body, but it has everything in a battery. I stripped all of the electronics out of it. I stripped all of the the gears and, and and everything, and I put them in the black one. I took the black one. I pulled all the red trim off of the silver windshield, and I did a complete flip flop between the two cars. So now I have a solid blacked out Corvette, and then one that will be solid red. Nice. And the blacked nice, out one. Nice, Kelly. Thank you. And the blacked out one. Um, the only painting. A lot of people ask what I painted. That's all. That's oh. all. Um, uh, the uh, uh, is all uh, uh, Meguiar's uh, black treatment that I use on that plastic. There's no paint. So I use that on the plastic. And then the only thing I painted was the wheels. Um, I stripped the chrome off of them. Painted them. Um, flat black and then I painted the um, rotors the disc rotor behind it to look uh, silver to look like a real uh, brake. Man, Billy I so want a car like this when I was a kid. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I'm like I'm actually, I didn't... there's something I'm trying to do here soon is to build one of these that actually has enough power and weight capacity to move me around. <laughs> oh my gosh. Billy, it's extraordinary. Oh my gosh. Kids are going to like, you're just going to have to put your Billy stamp on all of these. This is amazing. Amazing. Now, Billy is actually talking to us from his paint booth. Absolutely. (laughs) That I am. That I am. Live from his paint booth. (laughs) So I had one quick story that relates to the power wheels. I wanted to tell you about that happened to me um, here about five days ago. So, um, there's I, I don't know if I have it. I may have it on a post on on that page um, of the of the little mobility scooter. And this is something to. Oh, to, yeah. This is something to Bolo. Well, one thing I do is I check Marketplace about three or four hundred times a day. I click on there. <laughs> I, I click on there and I click and they Facebook instead of like eBay and having to do a search term. Facebook uses your search algorithms that you do 
to to look at stuff and it puts everything that's recent right up right in front that you've been interested in items like it before right so i go through right and it does a list and usually if i check it every 10 minutes or so it's usually there's one or two new items and i i look and i look at everything and i look for freebies or super cheap stuff what i like to call my deal of the day on on marketplace <laughs> well, i love it i i am i i found the deal of the day a couple of weeks ago or a few days ago was this scooter it the guy put free and usually it's people that don't know how to post and they put free and they end up wanting a thousand dollars for it well <laughs> he put he put free and i messaged him and i was like if it's truly free i'll be at your house in 10 minutes send me your address he said i've already gotten 40 messages but you're the first one to say they'll come get it i said all right i'll be there in 20 minutes so i show up i pick it up it worked a year ago parked it doesn't work anymore. I didn't do any research on it because all I wanted were the parts from it. I bring, right, right. I bring it home. I'm going to pull the motor and everything out of it. So I bring it home. I do my research on it. And by the way, this is something I think is a pretty simple fix. I haven't d dove into it yet. So I bring it home. I look it up and it retails brand new for $2,200. And if I fix it, and even if I fix it and end up spending 300 bucks, I can still end up selling it for a thousand used. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, and which was crazy because I was going to pull the, the driveline and everything out of it and put it in the power wheels that I wouldn't be able to sell for 500. So, <laughs> so I thought right. that was kind of, kind of a crazy find, but yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely my biggest find of the week for sure. So what, nice. so what's, what's next, Billy? So, the power wheels is something that I'm going to continue to dabble in, but the big thing that I've really been focusing a lot of time and energy on, and I've been focusing on for about six months. In fact, I had planned to do a, an opening uh, before Christmas, but it's just not going to happen this year. Um, I am buying local sports apparel, accessories, that kind of stuff. Everything from purses to shoes to jackets to t-shirts and everything in between. And I'm getting right now. I'm getting about 90% of it at the um, at the outlet center, uh, because you know when you know when you factor in the weight and the cost of everything, I'm getting shirts. You know, I'm getting items from anywhere from 25 cents to two dollars a piece for the heavy stuff, and right. um, and this is stuff that I can put in a local shop with a local team and charge two dollars for something I paid a quarter for that anybody in their right mind would pick up right off the shelf and buy that retails for 20 or 30, but because it's lightly used and I've already put the effort in to find it all, then, you know, it gives uh, these fans an opportunity to come in and have everything at their fingertips instead of having to go out and do the thrifting for themselves. I love right. it. So right now, I love I'm, all I'm, the I'm, hustling he's doing, Jason. Thank you. Right now, I'm up, I'm up to about one quarter of the store uh, of uh, about a 400 square foot store being full full for merchandise. So give me another couple of months and I'll be there. All right. So I see I, I see we have a second show in our in our future with you once the store's open. Right. <laughs> definitely. I, I definitely look forward to that, guys. All right. Cool. Well, I gotta say, Robin, what an what an amazingly eclectic guest. I mean, just so cool. Uh, you know, started selling online and then he's, and he's handy and, and I ain't handy. Cause so that's awesome. But you know, <laughs> but, it, but it boils down to everything we've always talked about in the thrifting board and on this show is you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta hustle. You got four kids, two dogs, a wife, the roof over their heads, their cars. And when you lose your job, you can't just suck your thumb and sit in the corner. You got to get out and do something. And so <laughs> Well, that's the truth. Right. Billy's doing something has led him to a bunch of different things. And, and I think it's so cool that you have this array of talents and, and you're, and you're using all of them. So I, I, uh, I commend you on that, sir. And, and thank you for, uh, thank you. thank you for being on tonight. I think you're an amazing addition to, to our group and our family. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I encourage anyone who watches the show, especially if you're in the vicinity of Oklahoma and you need a chicken coop or a rooster coop or a, a rabbit hutch or a power wheel, now you know who to talk to. Billy Dunn, he can be found on Facebook. He can be found in the thrifting board, nice and easy. If you still can't find him, message me. I'll connect you with Billy if you want to buy something off of him. 
Oh, and if you see me at the yeah, Goodwill, for sure. Goodwill out- outlet, please be nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> they will, Billy. They will. Because not only are you a great dad, you're also a guy who like does everything. What do you, what do you call that, Jay? It's like a the Renaissance man. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> You actually used the right right term, and I I hit the buzzer by accident. That was sucky. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, it was a great show. So do me a favor. If you liked what you see, give us a thumbs up down below. And if you've not subscribed to to my channel, please do. We're going to have tons more shows like this. As I said, this Sunday, Mom and I will be back at 6 p.m. Pacific. How to add a, a video to your eBay listing because it has changed. It will change again in the near future, but we're going to show you, make sure you understand how it works right now. And those of you in the Seeker Beach, your guest webinar for November will be tomorrow night. So tune in for that. So, Billy, thank you. If you need anything from me or Robert, uh, you know, feel free to post anything you need or if you want to sell something, just let me know. You you can do whatever you want, buddy. <laughs> thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. I had a great time this evening. I really enjoyed meeting you guys. Thank you, everybody. Doing it on the fly. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good one.